Hi, this is Paul Soltz from iPhone Dev TV. We're going to get started with Xcode. I want to do a little overview of how it's going to work. So if you don't have Xcode open yet, you're going to press the command space bar to bring up Spotlight, or you can take your mouse up to this top little corner right here and just click on the magnifying glass. Now, once you do that, just type in Xcode and you will see Xcode pop up. Now I am using a, a beta version. So there's Xcode 6 beta 3. I want Xcode 6. 6 beta 6. Um, so that is right here in front of you. You can see version 6. And what we're going to do is we're just going to open this up. So you should see it in your your panel over here. So it's right here. Once it comes out of beta, it won't have this beta flag on it and it's going to look just like the icon without that. So this is the old icon for Xcode 5. And I'm going to just jump into an existing project I have just to show you where to look for things and how things work. So let's do this before we dive into a actual coding example with Swift and just get used to the interface. So I'm just going to double click here. That's going to open up the project. Once we're in here, you're going to see settings in the, the center tab. Now in here, you can find stuff like device orientation, the status bar, app icons, and frameworks that you need to use. So these are code files that Apple's providing for you that make it really easy to make an iPhone app right away. Now on the left side, we're gonna see our project navigator. On the right side, we're gonna see our assistant sort of utility panel. And then along the bottom, there is an additional panel that will appear here. And then the main content is in this center section. So in terms of finding where panels are, we have these three buttons up here, which are extremely important, especially if you're on a small monitor like I am right now, you'll want to hide different panels. So if I click this button, you'll see that this corresponds to that left panel. This one corresponds to the right or so the bottom panel. And we can see some more information down here. Here's where you can get some error messages if you have a mistake or a crash. So that's really helpful. And then on the right here, we have this utility panel. So when you're in the zone and you're looking at a code file, I'll just bring up an existing code file I have now. This is Objective-C code. It's not Swift, but the, the same thing will apply. You can have line numbers in here. You have the, the different code lines in here. And if you want more space, you can turn off these side panels and you can work uninterrupted. There's also a quick access bar up here with these breadcrumbs. So you can jump to different sections in your code, or you can jump to different code files. So here I can switch between code files. Super convenient, easy to get to different things. That is the interface. Now let's see how we can look at multiple things at the same time. So generally when you're making an iPhone app, it's not just code, it's code and user interface. So right here we have a sample interface that I've designed and I want to bring this up with an associated code file. And so that's what this little tuxedo icon is for. This is the assistant editor. If you click on this, you can get both the interface file and the code file. Now on a small screen, it's not going to look very good. So we're going to have to play with getting this to, to fit in nicely. So you can turn off these side panels. And now what you can do is if you need to move something, this is a drag and drop editor, you can just drag it around the screen. And if you put it in a place that you don't want, you can always use the command Z to undo something and that will undo it. So don't worry about messing things up. You can always undo. It's, it's really good to experiment. Now, this code file over here is going to be associated with something. And generally, you can do two things. You can do automatic or you can do manual. And so this is automatic is sort of where the assistant sort of comes in. That's why you have the tuxedo icon, because this will show me the associated code file for when I'm working with this. So here I can see all the different uh, lines of code that are going to interact when I'm doing something. So why don't we just run this application? So up on the top left, I want you to look at these two buttons. So play and stop. It's pretty straightforward. This starts your app, this stops your app. Now, once we have the app running, we can actually play with it on the actual Mac computer. We don't actually need an iPhone to learn how to make iPhone apps. So you can get started right away with just a Mac and you can run it here. And actually this is the cheapest option because otherwise you need to pay $99 a year for a developer account to publish on your own iPhone, which is still a great thing to do. But if you're looking to save costs and you're just trying this out, I highly recommend holding off on purchasing the annual subscription and just doing it on your Mac. So here's a little utility I created. This is for picture framing. So I want to set a, a picture in a frame and I want a border around it. 
And this just helps me calculate how big the edges will be so that when I'm cutting the frame, if I'm doing this manually, I know what the cutting dimensions are and I know what the final size is. So we see the size down here for both the frame and the image. And then if I, I have a different image, so right now I have a picture of my dog, Ro, I can just tap on that and Apple provides some beautiful images in here that we can just get started with. And this is a new thing with Xcode 6. So we now have some great artwork and, and that makes this picture frame look gorgeous. So that's running an app on the device through the simulator. So this is simulating what it's gonna behave like. And the next step would be to run it onto your iPhone. So if we look at the top up here, you'll see that we have different versions of iPhones or iPads that this can run on. And then at the very top, you're gonna to see iOS device. So if you're trying to run it on your own device, you're gonna to need to select this one and then connect your device with a USB cable. So that's pretty much it for getting around the interface. Using these different buttons up here, these two are the most popular that you'll use. You only use this if you do version control and if you're not sure what Git or SVN are, don't worry about this tab. So we'll start with the, the single view. That's the easiest one to get into. And then having the left panel is usually helpful if you're in a code file. Having the right panel is usually more helpful when you are in an interface file. So if you're in an interface file, it's gonna look like a uh, storyboard is gonna be the extension here. Whereas a code file is gonna be .h, .m, .swift, uh, et cetera. So that is sort of a, a getting started. Um, the other thing that's nice with the interface files before we wrap this up is that it's a, it is a drag and drop editor. So what I can do here is I can just drag a label out onto the screen. I can drag a button onto the screen and I can just double click these and update the text. Now, this is way easier to do in Xcode than any other development environment I've seen from either Google or Microsoft. This is just super simple to change the text. So here I could just put my name and I could do a buy button. So really easy to add elements to your app. We could stop this, we could run this again, and we would see the new label. Now it's a little bit weird on the formatting, but I can hit the button and we can trigger an action, do something with that. So that's a quick run through of getting started with Xcode. And if you don't like something, you can always undo and that will get rid of whatever changes you did. So I just hit Control Z or Command Z a few times to get rid of that. So welcome to Xcode. In the next video, we're gonna walk through a simple app example that's gonna show you how to calculate how old you are in days. And so this is gonna use the drag and drop editor that we've seen right here. And it's gonna use some logic with the Swift programming language to get started. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.